Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So on the channel now, I have watched season one and season two of An Idiot Abroad and I have really enjoyed them. And several of you told me in the comments, um, or maybe it was a couple of comments on lots of likes, I don't know. But it, I have become aware that prior to starting season three of An Idiot Abroad, I should watch this video. It says Carl Pilkington and Warwick Davis go shopping. I saw Warwick Davis on a clip I reacted to not long ago that had Johnny Depp, Warwick, Ricky Gervais, and Steve, Steven, um, together. And then there's one other one with Warwick and Johnny Depp. And so I'm intrigued about what this clip is, but also am excited just because I've really enjoyed pretty much everything I've watched with Carl on it. So without further ado, here we go. With the trip, Carl was worried about traveling with someone he didn't know. So Ricky sent Carl and Warwick on a shopping trip to get to know each other. If I'm being honest, what I'm... What trip? They were going on a trip together? If I'm being honest, what I'm worried about with you tagging along you know, are you going to become a hindrance? Just a second. Am I... No, don't want to get this straight from the start. Am I tagging? Tagging along feels like you're slightly doing this under duress and I... You've well, I don't, I don't know why we're doing this. Tagging, no, it's not tagging along. We're going on the trip together. And I'm charged with opening your eyes to some... to the way the world really is. Is Warwick going on the going with him on on season three to one place other places is there another trip i mean i know i'll find out when i watch season three but what why what where I, i'm i'm more traveled and more experienced yeah but you're small-minded well mm -hmm. ricky sold it to me as i might get in the world record books for going around with you what's the record there's, there, you can't say there's a record for going around the world with a dwarf. That's not. There's, that's there isn't one. I've looked. There isn't one. So, so we can make one. It, that's ridiculous. Well, what are you saying then? You go around the world. You don't rush. You don't dawdle. But you take in the sights. So when we go around and we come back, we are full of culture and knowledge, and we've brought something away from it. We've not just got jet lag. Yeah. And a I like that. tropical disease. I know, but it's just funny hearing you talk like this because I probably had that attitude at the beginning. And when you do it, you're shitting yourself to death. You've got a temperature. You're having a bollock for lunch, you know, from some animal you've never heard of. I doubt you'll be saying, oh, yes, I'm loving the culture. You'll be pissed off. Kind of interesting concept to bring somebody with him to give him perspective and maybe. Uh, some optimism. This is the sort of book we want. Look, the travel book. A journey through every country in the world. Ooh, what a nice bookstore. Right? Yeah. I love books. Looks amazing. How There's long... a glacier there. How long do you think the longest cat is? The longest cat in the world. I can't even believe I'm thinking about this. Uh, I, I know, it's six foot. 123 centimetres. Right. What are you in centimetres? Um, about 105, I think. So this cat is longer than you. That's, That's a domestic cat. That's amazing. <laughs> Carl, look at some of these sights. I'm looking at a cat here. That's playing the piano. You're showing me an old rock. This is what I'm talking about. you just got such a blinkered view of everything. He hasn't got a clue. He actually thinks it is, it's gonna... Carl, can you just help us with these books? I need to put them back. That's all I'm gonna be doing. I'm a helper. Do you keep wandering off? Are you gonna keep doing this when we're on our trip? Well, we just keep bickering. Oh, this is hard work, this is, isn't it? Just he sees other. negative in everything. Everything I say. He wants to find a fault in it. Um, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody with such a 
Such an outlook. Well, I'm not good around enthusiastic people. If family's like me, we don't get enthusiastic about anything. We always expect the worst. So that when it happens, we know how to deal with it. How's he going to deal with it? He's not going to deal with it. I've got kids at home. I'm trying to think how I enthuse them about things. Yeah. I normally bribe them mm -hmm. sweets or something. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt him, but they're so different. It seems as though Warwick is very more optimistic, has a positive outlook, sees the best. I mean, I don't know. That's just based off of the few minutes I've seen of him. And Carl, in many scenarios, is the opposite. And having those two completely different approaches together, they're going to repel and have conflict because they are so different, but at the same time, be, they just met each other. So as they get to know each other, they can kind of soften those edges and soften those differences just a little bit to where they're more comfortable around one another and can be kind of like a yin and yang, so to speak. Because I have a good friend who's, well, in a lot of my life, I've always had different at different times, but a good friend that has an opposite kind of approach. And that doesn't mean like I'm always positive and that person's always negative. But it's good to have somebody that offsets you in that way to kind of bring perspective. You know, if you're positive, uh, too much positivity could be unrealistic. Too much negativity could be depressing so it's maybe you know what I'm saying I like the fact that they have different perspectives again just based on what I've seen so far so that makes me really excited to see them travel together and not only Warwick I hope I'm saying that right Warwick give Carl perspective maybe when Carl's not seeing something positive that he could be seeing but also maybe Carl will give Warwick perspective on what he's seeing. You know what I mean? Maybe. Use them about things. I normally bribe them. And I didn't mean to imply either that Warwick was too positive. I just realized the way I had said that. So I just, yin and yang. It's good to have yin and yang. How I enthuse them about things. I normally bribe them. Sweets or something. Maybe that works. We can't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. See, that's why that bloke cut the rope, in it? And touching the void. If you had someone like him, look at the mountain. It's another one, we've seen him. He cut it. Yeah, I'm just none the wiser as to what I was meant to get out of today with Warwick. Hey, what if they got in these to start with? They feel heavy. What do you mean? If I went into the camping shop and he said, oh, carry this bag for me, get me that off that shelf, won't you? Well, he, he just kept giving me signs that for hours. <laughs> he won't be able to do stuff himself. I said to him, I said, I don't want you being a hindrance to me. Yeah, but I don't want to be lugging your stuff about. I'm looking after my own stuff. <laughs> well, exactly. So why have you sorted him out for me? <laughs> it is a bit long, isn't it? He put wellies on. He had to tuck his bollocks in. There's nothing that's a standard fit that fits him, which means he's going to be saying, oh, me, me wellies are chafing. Not his ankles, his fucking ball sack. So I don't know, I don't know. And I told him, if he goes down for whatever reason and he needs me help, I've got to drag him. Now, what I did was... you're talking about a like in Vietnam. He's not going to go down, is he? I asked him to get in a rucksack in case he did go down, and he wasn't happy about that. I don't think I'll ever feel the need to get in the backpack. Honestly? Honestly. I don't know why he's not happy. I'm the one carrying him. I'm not getting in the backpack. Not getting in the backpack. Not getting in the backpack. It's not funny, really. If we're in the middle of nowhere... Yeah. ..and we have to... You know, he's talking about seeing orangutans. Now, I don't know how they act around someone of his size. I don't know what, whether they just seem black and white, and to him, he's one of them. <laughs> I, d I don't know, honestly, I don't know. But, but why him? What's, what's the reason for taking him? What's he bringing to the party here? Um, I'm going to be feminine. Is it over? Oh. Okay. <laughs> 
So let me know in the comments. Obviously, Carl and Warwick are traveling together. So is Warwick just going with him to the first place, perhaps? Or just going to stop in on occasion? Is he going to be there the whole season? You won't spoil it for me if you tell me. I'm, I'm very curious. And I'm, I was already really excited about season three. Like, there are times when I'm tempted to watch it all at once. Like, um, I need to stop saying, like, Monday, Idiot Abroad. Tuesday, Idiot Abroad. Wednesday, Idiot Abroad. But then if I do that, I'll run out. So that is the main reason that I keep Idiot Abroad as Saturdays to stretch it out. And so I have it to look forward to. Um, but let me know in the comments. And thank you for suggesting I watch this a little bit of backstory and to kind of see I don't know why I'm talking weird to kind of see how Carl and Warwick uh, interact interacted initially when they were first around each other I'm super curious to see how this goes um, anyway thank you very much for the recommendation thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time have a good one